Bringing a Doberman into your life is a big decision and one that absolutely should be taken seriously. So today I want to talk about a few things that you must be thinking about before getting yourself a Doberman. Welcome back to my Doberman show guys and today we're going to be looking at the most important things that you should be thinking about before bringing a Doberman into your home and I think this is going to be one of the most important videos you could watch before making this big decision. So I'm going to hand you over to one of my brood history experts who's going to break some of these things down for you right now. Number one, they have a reputation. Any breed that has its origins in human facing confrontational work, whether that be attack work, defense work, or even just stationary guarding, progresses through history with some stigma attached. The Doberman, whose early days were spent intimidating, often reluctant, and often dangerous people out of their owed tax money, is particularly a victim of this troublesome reputation. The fact that many lay people can't distinguish between a Dobie and a Rotti means that the two breeds have shared and magnified each other's negative attention. And now any dog that carries some muscle beneath a black and tan coat is tarred with the same brush. In truth, well-trained and well-socialized Dobies and Rotties are not dangerous or necessarily inherently aggressive. Both are protective, but neither are automatically liabilities to own. Unfortunately, a poor reputation circulates faster than any good information on dogs ever can. And so Dobies continue to be dogged, if you'll excuse the pun, by this reputation to this day. Any prospective owner of this dog needs to be prepared for the likelihood that the ill-informed public will judge them and their dog and will need to face the reality that they can't turn the tides of public impressions. Number two, they are cold sensitive. Perhaps due to the genetic influence of thin-skinned dogs like greyhounds in the breed development, Dobies come along with poor heat retention. Their coats are short, they're th skin is thin and they carry next to no body fat if in peak condition, meaning that unlike most dogs they are very poorly suited to cold climates. They will shiver and chatter if the temperature drops below t-shirt weather and like their scent hound cousins actually require a winter coat for walks in these colder conditions. So if you're in the UK, like me, uh, you'll want to have a well-fitting coat for your Doberman for a few months of the year. If you're in the US and somewhere like Alaska, in contrast, you'll need an even heftier coat for your dog and need to use it year-round. There are some activists who suggest that cold-phobic dogs shouldn't even live in freezing climates, and that heat-phobic dogs like Huskies shouldn't live in hot climates. But with appropriate measures taken, you don't have to limit your choice of dog to the ones designed and bred for your climate regardless of how nice that would be for the dogs involved. If you can handle the judgment and are happy to equip your scary looking dog with a dandy looking vest, then you're all set. Number three, they come cropped and docked. Much like the Cunny Corso, the classic look for the Doberman is to be cropped and docked. What that means for those of you who don't know is that they tend to have their ears cropped or cut back to a tight point and their tails docked or cut back to a short stump. This is a throwback to the dog's roots as a working dog whose floppy ears and very long tail considered weak points that could be targeted by enemies of various species or caught in undergrowth in certain terrains. Nowadays, a combination of tradition and the fact that cropped ears give a more intimidating appearance means that the practice continues. However, in several countries, including the UK, cropping and docking of all dogs is banned, except for working dogs in specific breeds, in specific employed working roles, and has been considered cruel and unnecessary. Regardless of your own opinions on the topic, it's worth bearing in mind, as a prospective owner of a Doberman, that you may face criticism if you import a cropped and docked dog into a country where the practice is restricted or taboo. And that if you keep your dog uncropped and undocked in countries where it is standard, you may face criticism that your dog is not true to type. Both of those situations require a thick skin and a positive attitude, so please do be warned. I hope you found that video helpful guys. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new here. We make videos like this every single week to help ensure that you're capable of having the perfect Doberman yourself. So I cannot wait to see you on the next episode.